What is going on guys? Hagstrong coming at you here. I got a bit of a recording setup going on here. I'm working on some stuff behind the scenes. This is only temporary. I'm recording downstairs and I, you know, I put this up to block out the background, give you like, you know, lighting and all that. I got to figure out what exactly I want to use for that, but we'll get there in the future. It's only temporary. Got some lighting going on. Um, but anyways, today's video will be, I am going to review Forbes Health. They put out, you know, a an article about the, where they, they went ahead and ranked the top seven chest exercises recommended by fitness experts. And I'm going to be breaking it down and giving my honest review on what I feel like I agree with, don't agree with, where would I put what, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in this kind of content, make sure you hit the subscribe button to stay tuned. You know, I'll have content coming out here soon. I'm working on a recording setup. I'm working on learning how to edit videos. Good stuff in the making, good stuff in the coming. Stay tuned for that. And uh, without further ado, let's get into it. So the top seven best checks, chest exercises, according to fitness experts, ranked on Forbes website. Now it starts off by giving us some, you know, breakdown of the muscles of the chest. And then it goes into the number one exercise it says here is the traditional push-up. Now, I don't know about you guys, but the traditional push-up is a good thing for a pinch. Uh, you know, for those of you guys who don't have access to gyms or anything like that or any kind of gym equipment, um, you know, at a certain point, it's good to, like, have body weight exercises. It's good to do traditional push-ups. Don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, I feel like you're so limited in that regard because there's so many other things you could be doing. And it's, it's a lot harder to continue to progressively overload that exercise because... Like, yeah, you could throw, like, weights on your back, or you could do variations, or more, like, tempo push-ups, or, you know, you could do, like, eccentric movements and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, there's just only so much you could do with, with push-ups, and they're effective, but I don't know if I'd go put them at, like, the number one most recommended chest exercise. It's good for beginners, it's good, don't get me wrong, it's not a bad chest exercise by any means, obviously it's as old as time, but I feel like I definitely would not put that at number one. Number two, they have <laughs> scapular push-ups. Now, for those of you who don't know scapular push-ups, it's when you kind of hold a push-up position, but instead of bending your arms and bringing your chest to the floor, you keep your arms locked up straight and you kind of move and try to pinch your shoulder blades together and allow your chest to dip and then push your shoulders back up. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I mean, just looking at this exercise, I've always used it as a shoulder warm-up. I've never used it as a chest exercise. I feel like they really missed the mark on that one. They definitely did not understand the purpose of that kind of a movement. Like, I guess technically holding the push-up position would activate the chest, but you're activating the scap, the, the, the scaps, the back, the shoulder. The, the You're working on shoulder mobility. You're working on getting your shoulders moving. You're not working on your chest in this exercise. And I don't know what like why they would put that as the number two recommended overall chest exercise. It's not a chest exercise. At least the chest is not the focal point. In the number three spot, we have the wide grip chest press. They specifically show this person using a, um, what do you call them, Smith machine. Now, that's fine and all, I guess. A wide grip chest press. Um, it says, you know, dumbbell or bench, I guess, both. Um, wide grip chest press, bench press, whatever. Obviously, the, the wider your grip, the more tension you're going to put on your chest. Overall, I can agree with this one. It's, it's effective, it's good to, you know, there's a lot of opportunity for progressive overload with, you know, adding weight, uh, like I said, having a wider grip, putting more emphasis on the chest, you can do eccentrics, you could even do incline, um, I don't really recommend decline, there's not really a whole lot of point to it, your lower chest is developed as it is, or, yeah, lower chest is developed as it is, but, um, you know, when you're doing a flat bench press especially, it works, it works all parts of the chest very well, good activation, good for progressive overload, good for building overall strength, um, I can agree with that one. Bench press, recommend it, uh, you know. Then it goes into narrow grip chest press, which, I mean, I would agree with, but in the same regard, as I said, with the hand placement on the bar, when you're doing your chest presses, the further out your hands go on that bar, the more emphasis you're putting on your chest. Now, when you are doing a narrow grip chest press, or you're keeping your elbows in tight, when you're pushing up, when you're pushing up, you're pushing more with your triceps than your chest. 
So it's good in the sense that if you're trying to up your bench numbers, you're going to want to try to work in some tricep work. You're going to want some narrow grip work because your triceps are your supporting muscle. Your triceps and your shoulders are going to support you when you're doing a bench press. So if you're looking to build your bench press, you're looking to get higher bench press numbers, you're looking to build chest strength, yes, it's good to, to include your triceps. So I mean, not necessarily the best chest exercise, but it does work the triceps and I can understand why they would put that there because your triceps are going to benefit your overall chest as well because it's a push muscle. Oh, um, sure enough, as I said, incline bench press. It's a variation of the of the regular chest press. You know, you're you're going in at an incline and you're doing you're performing the same movement. And you know, like they say, you know, thirty degree incline, I mean, whatever is comfortable, honestly. Uh it's good for working, you know, different parts of the chest. Um, you know, you're you're kinda with the incline, you're kind of changing where the emphasis is at to like more upper chest, if I had to say. Um, but you know, changing the emphasis of the chest, but overall it's going to build relative strength. It's a good push exercise, good for progressive overload. There's opportunity to grow there. You can add on, you know, more weights. You can do eccentric movements. You could do decentric movements. You could do, you know, pause sets. You could do drop sets. You could do all kinds of stuff. There's all kinds of ways that you can overload those exercises. And overall, just using any kind of a press movement for your shoulders, your chest, your legs. I mean, you know, press movements are a good thing. Um, you know. How, like, your bench press is going to work most of your chest in one exercise it's you know it, you can go heavy you can go light you can get reps you can go you know there's a lot of variability it's very effective at hitting the chest it's about as simple as it comes it's really that simple utilize the chest press don't be scared of it just make sure you're doing it right you know spare your shoulders spare your shoulders don't flare your elbows you know throw your shoulders out don't throw your shoulders out don't be stupid don't overload the weight know what you can handle but utilize the chest press it's it's the most basic and utilized chest movement for a reason because it's effective it's efficient and like i said progressive overload you want to be able to kind of overload yourself to overload that muscle whether that be with the the overall output of the workforce of like you know how much weight you have on the bar uh rep outs there's eccentrics there's you know pause sets there's drop sets there's all kinds of different ways that you can progressively overload your chest from that that kind of a movement so overall i can agree with the press the next exercise it gets into is a cable chest fly now i like that it specifically says cable because with cables i'm sure a lot of you have heard this by now especially if you've seen any kind of fitness you know content creators or influencers or anybody out there who knows a lick about what they're talking about. When you're using a cable, there's constant tension throughout the repetition. Now, I personally, like when I was younger and me and my father went to the gym a lot, we leaned more towards the dumbbells because it was just easier to get into, it was easier to set up, whatever, yada, yada, yada. But when you're using a dumbbell at the top of that set, you're just kind of resting there. Now, we always tried to combat that by like trying to really focus in on the squeeze at the top of the rep, but I mean, that can only do so much. When you're doing a cable fly, that tension is on you throughout the whole movement because that cable is constantly pushing you back and out. And overall, it's good for just getting that full range of motion, that full rep tension throughout the rep. Chest flies are great for working on your chest insertions if you're, you know, looking for that bodybuilder factor, those nice insertions of the chest up in here and out there. And, you know, you want that real striated look, you know? You know what I'm talking about? The striations in the chest, the insertions, it's good for all that, um, you know, it's it's just overall a good exercise. I really like to put this one in here. I could recommend that as being definitely one of the top chest exercises, top two chest exercise, very slept on. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, if you don't have a cable machine, dumbbells will work. Uh, but definitely cable chest flies are going to be better for getting that full tension, like I said, throughout the full range of motion, full contraction, full range of motion, tension throughout the rep. And that, you know, the, that fly exercise, that squeeze exercise is really going to help with the striations and the insertions. So anyways, without further ado, the number seven overall recommended Forbes Health chest exercise is tricep dips. I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty sure again here, this is an exercise that they have on here as... Let me, let me, I kid you not, seven best chest exercises according to fitness experts. Now, these are supposed to be ex experts here, but in, in my opinion, I'm reading this and I'm going, well, there is like three or four exercises on here that do not target your chest at all. Now, don't get me wrong. Again, 
shoulders, triceps, they're important supporter muscles for chest exercises such as a bench press, and that's fine. But, but this does not target your chest at all. It targets your tricep, it's in the name. They have this one performed, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of arms behind the back and they're showing it, uh, you know, up against the couch, bending to that 90 degrees, pushing back up. Don't get me wrong, it's good to work your triceps. Do not neglect your triceps. If you want to get stronger in your chest, you need strong supporting muscles, such as your triceps and your shoulders. But I was a little thrown off that they threw in tricep and shoulder exercises in a list that I was reading as seven best chest exercises. Kind of funny. Oh, well. Overall, I mean, these are all decent exercises, don't get me wrong. They're good for beginners, but at the end of the day, push-ups, scat push-ups, dips, I mean, these are all basic things. These are all things that ever, nobody's surprised by. Chest presses, effective. Cable chest flies, utilizing cables in your local gym is going to help you with your movements. It's going to help you see progress in the gym because of this, the constant tension throughout the range of motion. Having tension at every point in a range of motion is going to like further activate that muscle than utilizing maybe a free weight where at the top of the rep there's not a lot of tension. At the bottom of the rep there's not a lot of tension. You're only getting tension for like that middle section of the rep which can be even like a fraction of a second sometimes. So having a cable throughout those same movements, keeping constant tension, tension you're going to feel it a lot more and you're going to work that muscle a lot more. Your time under tension per rep, keep that in mind, time under tension, how much time during each repetition is that muscle under strain that is important because the more that you are activating and exercising that muscle throughout each range of motion that 10 reps is going to do more for you than 10 reps in which you only have activation of the muscle throughout so much of the rep like a split second or two of the rep but with that being said overall not a bad list of chest exercises a little weird that they include like triceps and shoulders but i get it because at the end of the day your triceps and shoulders are important to your chest health overall but I mean, I don't know. Good beginner exercises, decent information. I wouldn't personally follow that if I was like, I, I, I could pick a lot better exercises. I mean, you're, you're missing out on like, you know, you're missing out on like some of your other chest exercises, like maybe some like seated cable presses or, you know, there, there, there's plenty of exercises out there. I'm throwing a blank off the top of my head but i'm sure i could make a video guys if you guys want a video of me going over my recommended chest exercises go ahead and let me know i can make that for you i can compile a list of my favorite and what i feel like to be the best chest exercises but just overall i feel like this <laughs> there could have been better options i mean a push-up and a bench press i mean we all kind of expected that and then at the end of the day they're talking more about shoulder and tricep than anything but those are my thoughts and opinions on the <laughs> Forbes seven best chest exercises according to fitness experts. Let me know what other kind of content you guys would like to watch. Um, you know, I was thinking about starting up here soon, Gaming Fridays on the channel, if I can get it up and running. So like every Friday I will stream on Twitch and then post um, you know, the clips on YouTube and make like a playlist of Gaming Fridays. I don't know, something fun to play around with. Let me guys know what you think. As always, thanks for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button to stay hack strong and follow along. I will see you guys in the next episode.